when you're throwing yourself into an uncomfortable environment, you're going to get transformed. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. Today's episode is such a fun, eye-opening, and inspiring conversation. I just know you'll love the stories and the insights that we share in this one. Um, before I introduce our guest, I do want to let you know that we just launched the 5-Minute Joy Journal on the Lavender Shop. The 5-Minute Joy Journal is a guided journal to help you cultivate joy and gratitude in your daily life. Focus on the good, celebrate your life, and reflect on a new prompt all in just 5 minutes a day. It's a great way Way to add journaling into your routine without being intimidating or overwhelming. Go to shop.lavendaire.com to check it out. All right, on to today's video. So our special guest today is Sky Cowens. Sky is a video creator who explores the world of wellness, spirituality, and alternative lifestyle on her YouTube channel, Sky Life, through documentary style videos. With more than 600,000 followers combined across her platforms, Sky's mission is to inspire the shift from judgment to curiosity. So here is Sky Cowens. Hello, Sky. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing so great. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to get into your story and everything you have to share. Um, let's start with your background. Like, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into wellness and spirituality? Yeah, it's been such a journey. So for as long as I can remember it, I've been super passionate about health and wellness. I was an athlete growing up. I was a soccer player. So I was really into nutrition and exercise, and I actually started practicing yoga in high school to be a better soccer player so I could prevent injury and build strength. And before I knew it, yoga started changing the way that I think and perceive the world, um, and it became my spiritual practice. And so I would say yoga has been the most consistent part of my journey for the past 12 to 15 years. Um, but what happened was I sort of got sick of playing soccer after being in such a competitive environment with that sport throughout high school. So I took a different path in college and I studied broadcast journalism and, and I was very dead set on going into the news industry and becoming a news reporter. I was super involved in student media and was a reporter and anchor for a student newscast and interned at news stations and did the overnight shift. Um, and I was only doing that because I thought that that was like the path to success. I wasn't actually pursuing that path because I was passionate about it. And I kind of had a wake up call uh, towards the end of university when I started preparing for the real world and having to face what I was going to do with my life. And I realized that the news industry was just not in alignment with me. Um, and through doing actually yoga teacher training, I completely awakened to a new perspective. Um, and that was sort of the start of pursuing content and creating videos that where I was using all the same skills of learning broadcast journalism. I was sh learning, you know, shooting, editing, all of that, but I was actually putting it towards topics that I was passionate and excited about. And that was really like the early stages of what you see now on my YouTube channel, Sky Life. And those videos were so cringe to look back on. Um, but I started making videos about wellness and, and yoga and mindfulness. Um, and then I eventually started working at a media company after college and sort of was in the corporate world um, and then slowly shifted to entrepreneurship and doing my own YouTube channel just because I had so many ideas inside of me I needed to unleash. And that's really what started my channel, Sky Life. And it did start as wellness. And then I just got more into spirituality and went down this super deep rabbit hole into these ethereal realms and sub communities and cultures. And now that's really what excites me the most is telling stories about these people, places, and experiences I'm having. 
Yeah, that's amazing. And we'll get to all those new things about your channel. But going back to when you were, you know, just out of college, did you start Sky Life immediately? Like, was that something that you were doing as a hobby while you were working? I did start an early version of Sky Life in college, but it's not the channel that I have today. And it was very different back then. I ended up pausing it because I needed to find a job and I needed to make money and work. So I took like a year and a half off from doing anything Sky Life related. Actually, it was like two years. And eventually I started it again as a new channel with this new knowledge that I had built, a new experience and did like a clean slate and then started the channel that I have today. Yeah. Um, I love that you got to use all of the skills that you were, you already had from journalism. Is that kind of what influenced your style? Because you kind of have this like docu style vlog (laughs) type of format and it's not easy to create that style. (laughs) Um, like talk about like choosing the format and then I want to know about like your process of, of planning and creating these videos. Well, the process is always evolving, but I do think I've always had the journalist archetype in me. That's been the case for most of my life. And I think I honestly was so brainwashed in college to be a reporter and talk a certain way. I had to unlearn how to like not do the reporter voice and it still comes up, but I think now it's part of my style and it's become like part of who I am as a creator. Um, so I've, I've always been obsessed with documentaries. That's my favorite type of content to consume is docu series, documentaries. So I just generally watch a lot of that content and I've taken a lot of, um, things that I'm inspired by from that style and, and from my experience in news and sort of merged it with more of a YouTube friendly vlog format. Yeah. How long did it take you to find like the right format and the right voice? Was it a difficult journey on YouTube or like how how did you find your voice? I feel like it's still happening. I'm still finding exactly what the format and the style is. I am always trying and innovating. And I think that's just an ongoing journey and it will always be evolving. But I do think it was quite a process to find like, this is what lights me up as a creator. This is the type of content I want to make. These are the stories that excite me. This is what lights my soul on fire. It was years of trying different things. And the thing I always say is just, just to start with following your excitement. Like if you can follow an inkling of excitement, it's like a trail of breadcrumbs that leads you down this path where eventually you're like, wow, this this is it. This is what I'm so excited about. Yeah. Um, how Was it difficult for you? Because I know how hard it is to number one, grow a YouTube channel and to like expect to make a living out of it. Like, was that any part of your mind? Like how, you know what I mean? Like career wise- like, what were you going through as, cause it's, yeah. What made you stick with it? And what, what was going through your mind during those times? Wow. There's so much to unpack in that question. Um, well, I never knew that YouTube was a career path in high school. I watched YouTube, but I didn't understand that people were making money and doing it as a career. And it wasn't really until after college, I started working as an intern at Buzzfeed. And I was like, there's this whole business model around YouTube. And part of my job here is to just help produce these YouTube videos that are generating revenue. What the heck is going on? And then I understood that it is a legitimate career path. And that really opens my eyes to this world. So when I started my channel, I really started it out of the desire to just express my creativity and create videos that I was passionate about. But I do think there was something in me that eventually would love to do it full time. But I didn't expect that to be the case right away. And it did take me more than two years to transition to doing it full time. But once I sort of got a taste of creating for myself and being independent and working for myself, although it comes with a lot of challenges, I could never look back. And um, it's definitely tested me. And I have wanted to quit a lot of times. I'm not going to lie about the ups and downs. Um, because as a content creator, you 
if you're doing it as a full-time career and you're making a living doing it, it is 100% an entrepreneurial path with that is a roller coaster. And um, I still get so tested so many days. Even this week, I was like, I just can't do this. Like, there's so much going on. But that's part of the fun. I think I would rather be faced with those challenges because that's what makes it fun and exciting. And you're constantly problem solving. And I just love that. I just love the challenge of entrepreneurship and then merging it with like the, the creative side of this business. Let's take a break to hear about today's sponsor, Clinique. You guys know I love skincare and I always appreciate when a product is clinically tested to be effective, which is why I'm excited to partner with Clinique. If you have dark spots, it can often feel like a vicious cycle. As soon as one fades, another pops up. Break the cycle with Clinique Even Better Clinical Dark Spot Interrupter. This powerful serum works on melanin-rich to fair skin and helps visibly correct dark spots such as acne marks while protecting from future discoloration. I'm excited for the serum to help me achieve the best version of my skin. Developed by dermatologists, the Clinique Even Better Clinical Dark Spot Interrupter is an oil-free, non-acnegenic, and fast-absorbing serum meant to plump and brighten the skin. It features their proprietary brightening molecule and vitamin C for a more even looking skin tone. In eight weeks, 94% of people demonstrated an improvement in radiance and visible skin tone, including acne marks. And in 12 weeks, a 39% visible reduction in dark spots. Get even better clinical dark spot interrupter this holiday season, available at clinique.com. I totally relate to all of those feelings. Like you, there's so many times where I have wanted to quit and there's so many ups and downs. Um, it, and going back to your channel, like do you do everything? Like, what are you, because your videos seem like they take so much effort to produce. <laughs> so, so what are you doing when you're planning a video? How long does it take to finish a video from like start to, to end? It definitely varies. And the videos are quite involved to produce. Sometimes I'm, I'm working a lot of times around different people's schedules if I'm featuring someone in a video, I have to rely on entirely when they're available. And sometimes there are ideas that happen and it's a good fit with a brand that I'm working with or it's a good fit and it's a timely topic for something coming up. So we have to scramble and like pull it together last minute. That happens. I, it also happens where I'm planning videos for months ahead. Uh, so it really just depends on on a lot of factors. Um, but I am constantly working on the art of delegation and the art of, <laughs> of, sis- of turning this into a better, a better system. Um, so I've hired editors over the, you know, over the years, I still do a lot of the editing, but I do get help with that. And, um, I'm actually hiring new editors right now to really come on as like full-time editors. Cause that's probably the biggest, uh, time suck. And it's like one of the most important things. It has been the hardest thing for me to figure out because I feel like so much of my voice and the storytelling comes through the editing. And I've been like attached to it because mm-hmm. I've been editing for so long and it's so much a part of my uh, my voice as a creator. And it's been really hard to let go of that. So I've like hired yeah. freelance editors, but I still am always like getting in the editing and uh, I'm always super involved in the post-production process and every part of the pr- production process. Um, but it's been amazing to have a production assistant come on board, a manager that handles brand partnerships, because I c- truly couldn't do this alone. And now as I'm growing and have aspirations to grow the channel, that's becoming more and more apparent. Like this is a team effort and creators are now becoming media companies. So either they're have a couple people or they have huge teams now. And I do have aspirations to really grow this uh, into more of a media company beyond just my personal brand. So uh, that is something I'm in the process of. Wow. I love hearing that. Um, Okay. So I I do want to get into like the stuff that you talk about on your channel and what you've learned. So let's start with out of all the videos you've made so far, what is by far the most life-changing experience that you've had? Yeah, every video transforms me and that's part of what comes through in the videos. 
because my whole thing is really immersing myself. And so I feel like when you're throwing yourself into an uncomfortable environment, you're going to get transformed. Now, there is a video that is probably one of my favorites and favorite experiences. It performs so badly, which is so sad. It but always looks like that. <laughs> like the ones that you love and you're proud of, like nobody cares. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I love yeah. this video so much. So I did this crazy thing where I went to the witchcraft capital of Mexico, Catamaco. And I actually spent time with these Satanists there and the witches of the town. And <laughs> I made two videos. One was uh, this ritual with the local witches in this like super creepy cabin. It's so spooky, but also so beautiful. That was like a beautiful ritual. It was all about like sisterhood and female empowerment. Um, and it was all in Spanish. And then we did another video where with this guy named Enrique, who is like the king Satanist of the town. And Vice has done content with this guy. And I actually got connected to these people through my friend Dakota, who's a YouTuber and does crazy stuff on his channel. Like he's documenting really wild experiences. And he had done a video with the Satanists there. And he convinced me somehow to go. Uh, and I just learned so much through that experience because there were several things about it that I love. One, the storytelling and the opportunity to document something so fringe was really exciting to me. And then also just the practice of knowing that I am in command of my own energy. And if I go into a situation that's scary to me, that if I can hold down my energy and set my intentions, I can be an observer and not get mixed up in any mm -hmm. dark energy or anything unwanted in my space. And it was really empowering to go through that process. Because um, I think a reason why that video didn't necessarily perform well is because people are afraid of it. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> for me, like it was, a, it was scary, but because I went through it and I learned how to deal with a situation like that, I came out on the other side so empowered, feeling so much stronger. And it was nothing like I actually expected. Like the reason, I wanted to know why. Why are you worshiping the devil? Why do you have uh, a devil's lair where you're sacrificing animals? Like this is craziness, why? And that's really what I always want to get to the bottom of with my videos. And instead of place judgment, because that's very easy to just go into a situation and judge something we don't understand or that we're afraid of, instead of going in with judgment, can I start shifting that judgment to curiosity? And mm. curiosity doesn't necessarily mean you are going to agree or right. align with this. It's, curiosity isn't, doesn't mean I'm gullible, I'm going to believe everything these people say. It means I'm open to learning and I can be a neutral observer. And through that, I, my worldview has completely shifted in all aspects. And I really believe through curiosity is how we can transform the world and start to dissolve so much of this crazy division and violence and hatred that we're seeing. Curiosity is about learning and that's it. So that video is hands down one of my favorites. That is amazing. Like I, it sounds like you really like push yourself out of your comfort zone and that like helped you grow. And just even when you were talking about that, like Satan is that's a, like a topic I would never even like, like it is scary. A lot of people like don't even want to look at it or acknowledge it. And I think it's really like, it's really open-minded and empowering for you to be like, it's a, like to not judge and just to be an observer and to be curious. And I think more people can remember to have that mindset because so there are people from all walks of life on earth and you're not going to agree with everyone, right? But it's that mindset. Um, amazing. Another question is like, how do you even find these, these people that you have on your channel? How do you, I guess, how do you choose like what topics to cover? <laughs> yeah. People ask me that all the time. And it's really interesting because I feel like they appear or they just come into my <laughs> Because field. you have the intention. You're like, I want to make interesting stuff. And they just like come to you. It's so interesting. I, I honestly, the ideas part of my channel is the easiest part because 
I just get information. I get hits about things or I watch something and it inspires something. But a lot of times because I'm in this world now, I like am living and breathing it. I get a ton of, of incoming things, you know, people telling me about something or I just come across people through my communities that I'm a part of. So I'm just so immersed in this world that I feel like they just appear. <laughs> Even I always said this because I used to live at this community house called The Portal in LA. And they would just come to our house. Like it was called The Portal for a reason. And we would have these community events. They were so fun. We would have music jams and all these parties and conscious events. And I swear, like, these characters would just walk through the door. And I'm like, oh my gosh, they're, I don't even have to go anywhere. They're coming to my home. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you're looking for it, like they'll find you. Or even when you're not trying, you're, you're attracting this because you're the storyteller. You're, you're basically like the messenger or the medium. <laughs> um, and so when you have, like say like you find an interesting person, do you like approach the video from an angle like you do you choose the angle or do you just kind of like like how do you go into it is it open-minded or is it like I want to tell this story yeah it really depends on the video I would say that as a creator and a storyteller that I am very aware that I'm delivering a product to people I am absolutely planning going into it an idea of what could happen or just to be to ensure that there's some type of story that can unfold or there's some type of story arc that will naturally happen. But I don't try to make, I, I don't try and plan what's necessarily going to happen in the moment because I really want to leave that up to the spontaneity because I think that's how uh, I get the best footage and get the best experience and that just personally. I'm doing this because I want to experience these things uh, first and foremost. And I want to tell stories about it, but like I want the experience to be authentic. So um, I do a level of pre-production planning, but I do leave a lot of it up to whatever is going to happen in the moment. And there's been so many times where like so the story just goes a certain way. And I was rolling with it and we're shooting yeah. something. And then all of a sudden... I'm like, oh my God, now I'm doing that. Like, I did not expect this. Like, <laughs> that happens all yeah. the time. Like, it really, oh a lot of it is just spontaneous. Yeah. It sounds like such an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> you never know what you're yeah. going to get. And the video could take a turn and be about something completely different. <laughs> uh huh. That's happened before in like ways that are so crazy. And it is yeah. an adventure. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, can you share a little, like, maybe pick an interesting story, something that, like maybe a favorite story of like a video that you had fun working on. Oh my God, I have so many stories. And I feel like half of this, some of the stories don't even make it into the actual video, right? Like a lot of the adventure doesn't even make it. For example, this is a, a, a little side story and then I'll go into the main story. But that Satanist video, as I was telling you about, on our way there to Mexico, I was with my videographer and our flight got canceled. And we had a whole day of shoot, uh, filming planned at this place called the Devil's Cave. And because it was such a hard place to get to, we lost a whole day of filming. And when the flight got canceled on the way there, I swear I was like, is this a mistake? I'm freaking out. And when the flight got canceled, I was like, it's a sign. Like, we're not supposed to go. This is dangerous. And then my videographer is like, I, I'm totally down to do whatever you want. Like, I, it's your decision. And I just made the call. I'm like, we are going. Like, we made it this far. We're going to get mm -hmm. there. And we just went straight through. And I'm so happy that we did. Um, but that's just one example. Like, that doesn't even, didn't even make it into the final video. And then another story that I'll share. Um, Oh my gosh, this was so crazy. This was like the craziest thing I ever did. And this was so not planned. Um, so in one of the videos I made, it was with this guy who considers himself a breatharian, where he says that he doesn't eat any solid food. Oh my gosh. And I was so skeptical about this going in, but I'm also like, but is there something to this? Because they say that 
monks in, and gurus in India are doing this. And that if you do breathe a certain way, you can like synthesize gases. And like, this is a theory I want to find out. I still like, I, I feel like I still don't like have a hundred percent answers on the breatharian thing, but I really just, this, this student who I went to go see Devon is such a, a fun character and a loving person. So I had a great time with him and learning his lifestyle. And one thing that he does um, to be able to not eat solid food is he drinks his own urine. Like oh he literally <laughs> does this thing called shivambu, which is like an ancient uh. Chinese medicine thing or whatever. And he drinks his own urine in the morning and it's like recycling nutrients and stem cells and whatever the theory is. Mm-hmm. And so in the video, I so stupidly like just said I would I would drink my own urine. The video got ten thousand <laughs> likes. Shut which up! Is so <laughs> literally like such a I totally sold myself short because ten thousand likes is like not that much in the grand scheme of things. And I just blurted out a number like because I was like nervous. And then oh my god, you got so many. The video quickly gets ten thousand likes, but I'm like, oh no, like I actually have to do this now. And I avoided it for so long because I didn't know how to do it. I'm like, how am I going to drink my own pee? Like, what oh the fuck? Gosh. So I, I just avoided for like a year until I was at this event. We were shooting a video at this event called Unleash. And this is my my former roommate, Yariksa, who lived at the portal with me, uh, who is such a character, an amazing person and healer and facilitator. She has a festival called Unleash and it's about radical self-expression. It's dance therapy and it's sober. It's like a hundred percent sober event. So we're there filming a video and I have a big group of my community there called the Vibe Tribe is what we call our community. And so the Vibe Tribe's there and people are asking me, they're like, when are you going to drink your own pee? <laughs> and I'm oh like, God. I don't know. And what ended up happening is they were like, you should do it here on stage and do it like we're all here do it now and I was like oh my god that is crazy but like that's kind of a brilliant idea and I asked Yadi it was like it started as a joke I asked Yadi like what what if I drink my own pee on stage and she was like you're doing it I'm putting you on the schedule like you're going to perform tonight and I'm like wait oh my gosh (laughs) it's such a big scene (laughs) Oh my God. It's like the craziest thing ever. Like I, I'm freaking out. I'm hydrating. I'm fasting to make sure it like doesn't taste weird. I'm like chugging water right before I go to my friend who's a DJ, DJ Equanimous. I'm like, can you help me with a song? I got to do a performance. I got to put on a performance of a lifetime. Like, so I like do this whole performance and I like in this (laughs) like witchy outfit and I'm like dancing sexy with like on stage. And then I literally on stage peed in a jar and drank it in front of everybody. And it was the most liberating experience of my life in the crowd. Oh my gosh. Wild. Yeah, like, I bet. Oh my I, gosh. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know how people were going to react, but people loved it. They were like, this is so rock star. And then the breath area came and like supported the whole thing. It was so funny. And like, None of that was planned. That happened the day of we did that. And it became like the craziest video I've ever made. And yeah, I mean, that's one of my favorite stories because like that's how it goes. <laughs> so the breatharian was there watching as well. The best part about this is that he lived in Miami where the thing that was taking place. So I call him and I say, hey, we're going to do this. Can you come? This is happening because of you. So he drives like 45 minutes away to the event. And we surprise everybody and bring him on stage right before I do- drink the pee. And he like, I-, I peed in the jar and then he blessed it. And then I chugged it. <laughs> oh my God. He blessed it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. That is so crazy. I-, I, You're such a trooper and you're so like, wow. I applaud you for doing that because... <laughs> Thank you. That's pretty Thank amazing. You. It was nothing. No, it was actually not that bad. My pee came out clear because I have been fasting and so hydrated. Good. It tasted like <laughs> salt water. Like it was actually low key, so not that bad. I would not okay. do it again though. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so funny. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, I, I love that you're just living life. Like you're, I, I think it's because of the people you meet as well, because they're so like out there, they open you up in a new way, right? Like, have there been other ways that you felt yourself open up because of the people you met? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like I just keep getting weirder and weirder and weirder every video because I'm surrounded by people I love. I've always loved characters that are so fully self-expressed. I think that's part of why I love making videos about these stories and people is because it's so liberating and freeing to see somebody who is in that expression and then to start also becoming that level of, of free. And I have absolutely been super opened up by being around people that are, they just are themselves fully. And like I, every video I make, I feel like I'm stepping more into who I am. And that's always evolving. And there's so many dimensions to who we are. Um, so I feel like this is a process of self-discovery and it's like a spiritual process of understanding my, myself on a deeper level. I love that so much. Like I, I think on a spiritual level, like every person is just like a facet of, of who we are, right? Like if you believe we're all one, <laughs> every person is just an example of like one facet of what life could be and one expression. And so the more people you meet, the more you let them change you is like the more you're like, connect reconnecting right with your with everything um do you have like an example of like how you've changed like so like maybe like there's like a key thing that shifted i i think I'm, i've shifted so much um i you know like i absolutely have like had more judgment you know, bef before going on this journey and intentionally wanting to shift to curiosity, I like just naturally would judge others more and myself mainly, like constantly judging myself, being hard on myself and being so self-conscious about everything. And I feel like it even shows up in my older videos. Like I just doesn't even feel like me because I feel like I was too afraid to actually be who I am. And I didn't even know who I was. I'm like, just trying to be someone and and I feel like through this process I've discovered more of who I am and I've just shifted more and more into that state of curiosity to let go and release judgment first and foremost of myself and then that helps me release judgment of others and like have more of that open minds and and learning mentality to understand other people. Yeah, I love that so much. I, I I think it's so beautiful what you do because it's not only are you sharing these stories, but like sharing how it changed you, like in real time. <laughs> like this is your growth journey. Um, okay, I'm sure you deal with a lot of difficult and critical comments. So how? What is your <laughs> based on all the weird things that you post? So oh how God. do you deal? What is your approach or your mindset on that? <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, totally. I don't really pay attention. I mean, I see them because I'm I'm communicating with my community. Like I love responding to comments and I love to engage with my community. So I absolutely come across the very mean comments. Um, but I feel like they, they less and less, like more and more they trigger me less and less, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like the more that I do this and, and I know why I'm doing it and my t intention is is really strong, it's just they tend to just like brush off me easier as time goes by. But that doesn't mean that things don't like trigger me, but I try not like dwell on it. Every once in a while, I, I get caught up and like I'll respond to something like defensive because that's just a human thing to do. But like, I try not to do that. I think the the worst place is TikTok. Like on my YouTube channel, it's really overwhelmingly positive, which is great. On TikTok, I've definitely been attacked. And to be honest, I don't even really go on TikTok that much because my, my jam is YouTube. Like I yeah. love my YouTube community. I mm -hmm. love that platform. TikTok is a way to share more of my message. And like, I don't really go on TikTok that much as as compared to YouTube. So I went on there one time 
Like so many people are attacking me. I'm like, wait, whoa, like, I don't even know what's going on. They're like, they're like, why are you ignoring us? I'm like, I'm not ignoring you. I just don't know what's happening. Like, I need to go uh, and make this video. So yeah. like, if I'm spending my time like dwelling on that and trying to defend myself. I'm spending less time creating and in my magic and, and doing what I meant to be doing. So just like brush it off. Yeah. That's it. Love it. Love it. You're like, I'm too busy for that. <laughs> I have a nice <laughs> video to like, work on. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. It's not a and good And also because the audience on TikTok is so wide and they don't know who you are. They don't like, sometimes if you show just a snippet of something, it's taken out of context. Yeah. So that's the problem. Because I post little clips of my videos and like, you're getting like, okay, first of all, the video that we shoot is like a whole day of shooting or multiple days of shooting that gets ended down to like a 10 to 20 minute video. And then the TikTok is like 30 seconds. So it's just, it's impossible to make a judgment on something that is like a tiny snippet of the actual experience. Yeah, totally. Okay. So now I want to get into your routine and some of the things that you've talked about. So like ice baths, cold therapy is something you're into. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, that has been also a very consistent thing since I got into that, since I made a video and a documentary about the Wim Hof method and Wim Hof, because that was also a super transformative experience. And what cold therapy taught me is really how to train yourself to handle stress. And that when you can intentionally put yourself in an uncomfortable situation, like sitting in an ice bath, and you can learn to control your breath and your mind. That is training for real life. So when shit hits the fan in real life, you've already practiced. Oh, <laughs> so I see. It, it's transformed my mental health. Now, um, here in Massachusetts, the water is really cold. So I prefer to go in the ocean when the water is cold. That's like my definitely my vibe. And ice baths not always available as well. So I do it as much as I can. Um, and I've been really into a sauna recently, like getting in the sauna. But my routine really shifts based on the season because I feel like as the seasons change, like we're changing and our bodies and what they need are changing. So I feel like my routine kind of shifts per season. And now mm. that we're going into winter months, I'm I'm even like transitioning how... I do my routine and my schedule is kind of all over the place sometimes. So like I try and have a general routine, but if I'm traveling, it's just like, if I can just do the one to two things I need to do every day, like good, which is mainly for me, it's like yoga or exercise, some form of movement. And then like some time to sit and meditate or breathe or like just listen even to a guided meditation, like just a small amount of time makes a huge difference. Right. Do you normally do those things like in the morning or evening? Like, do you have anything like that? I am such a big fan of morning routine. Like I'm such a different person when I intentionally take time to do my morning routine and when I don't. But my morning routine does kind of, it's fluid. Like I've learned to be less rigid around routine. And that's a very like masculine energy of like, it has to be at this time. And then I do this and like everything's minute by minute. And now I'm learning to really get more in touch with my feminine energy. And throughout the months, I mean, my hormones are changing. My body needs different things. So I'm really being more intuitive about my routine. Like this week on Monday morning, I hit a hard workout and then I... I had breakfast and go in the sauna or whatever that routine looked like. I have to like go back and be like, what did I do Monday morning? But I, it was like, we're hard workout. Um, and then Tuesday, it was like, I did yoga. It usually starts with like physical activity of some kind, whether it's hit workout, yoga. Yesterday, I did like um, a walk through the water at low tide. That's one of my uh, favorite things to do, actually, when I come wow. to Massachusetts. In the oh ocean? God, the or, okay. Yeah. So literally at cool. low tide, you walk th with water shoes on. You'll walk yeah. on the sandbar through the water, like all the way across. We go 
I do this with my my dad. It's like one of my favorite things to do with him. It's just the best. And it's beautiful and like such a good workout. It's so good on your legs. So I do that when I'm home, you know, in Massachusetts. And I did that Wednesday. And that depends on the tie. So the routine varies. But I will say that it should usually start with a, a physical activity. Um, meditation, and then hopefully I have time for journaling as well. Um, I love like sitting with cacao too. That's really been really powerful for me. Yeah. So, oh, what what do you what does cacao give you? Like, do you journal with it? To for people who have never worked with cacao, explain it. Right. So cacao is um, the purest form of chocolate. It's where chocolate comes from, um, and it, it's native to Central America, South America. And it's such a beautiful plant medicine, but it is, it's very gentle. So it's not like a psychedelic plant medicine, Um, but it does have the bliss molecule, they call it, anandamide and theobromine, and it opens your heart. It's a hope, a heart opening plant medicine. And um, it's super grounding for me. And it, is so good when I like make it the right way. It's just like a delicious decadent hot chocolate and it's incredible. So I sit with that. You really want to put your intentions into it. So it is a meditation Um, and being intentional with the medicine to like sit and, and pour your intentions into your mug and then like drinking in your intentions. Mm, I love that. Um, Okay. Um, in terms of meditation, is there like a specific technique? Like what do you focus on or try to do when you meditate? Mm-hmm. So I've tried a lot of different techniques when it comes to meditation. And like I said, that kind of things change per season. So I'll be like super into one type of meditation for three months. Then I'm sort of trying a new thing for three months. And then I come back to something. So um, it's been all different things but like for me I just love a guided meditation I'm lazy I don't want to (laughs) like do it myself so I just put on headphones and I play I've used different apps um and uh I look stuff up on YouTube like whatever I need that day I'm like okay meditation for anxiety relief or meditation for uh, for manifestation or whatever I want like you can find literally anything so yeah um I really I just love guided meditations yeah. Um, ma- can you share some of your favorites? Or maybe you can like send us the links and we'll add it to the, the podcast show notes. Oh my God. I was so into Dr. Joe Dispenza meditations for a while. Um, and then I've sort of been like trying new stuff recently, but his his meditations are so good. Um, I work with an app called Open. I love their app. I use their meditations all the time. Um, and then there's like a couple ones on YouTube that I like that I can send to you. I've used heads to headspace is great. I mean, headspace is like, yeah, flagship meditation app. So yeah, um, I'm a fan of of all of it. Awesome. Um, okay, so what are some other habits or changes that you've incorporated in your life based on what you learned from your other people in your content? Okay, so one thing that has really opened me up is expressing my emotions through sound. (laughs) So unlocking my voice and my throat chakra has been really transformative and healing for me. And the way that that started was really through my bhakti yoga practice. When I started getting into bhakti yoga, which is... Bhakti means devotion in Sanskrit. So it is really a practice of love and devotion and connecting to the heart and really connecting with source energy. And I would go to this yoga studio in LA called Bhakti Yoga Shala. And I would go there for kirtan, which is basically a group meditation of singing sacred mantras. And that was like my church uh, for years until they closed during the pandemic. Um, which was so sad, Uh, but they still do like pop-up classes and stuff, which are incredible. So 
I started getting into vocal activation through singing mantras. And then I started singing them on my own. And I would do yeah. my own meditation singing mantras. And wow. actually, I recently did a darkness retreat where I was in the dark for a week where uh, you're in a completely pitch black room. And that's a whole other story. And I made a video about it. But the biggest thing during that experience that happened was how much I was moving energy through my voice. And I would sing mantras uh, like on repeat, just hours and hours of just singing. Are these mantras that you've learned like in those classes? Are these things that are easy, you can look it up? Yes. So I've learned certain mantras, um, sacred mantras. Uh, you're singing deities. You're singing like this, the, the sounds of the deities. And um, and I would also just sing like phrases over and over that I wanted to embody. Um, and then I've, through other people that I've been around, I've learned uh, other vocal activation where you're literally just letting yourself like express sounds without filter. And yeah. that's super powerful when you can just let yourself like scream or cry yes. or like make weird noises and weird sounds. It's like so cathartic. And I never knew how powerful of a healing tool that could be. So that's one thing I've really gotten into. And um, it's come through a lot. It's like really been moving through me. And it's, it's one way I feel I'm able to move energy. And it feels really like I'm able to heal myself through that, that sound activation. Yeah. I think especially if you're like a storyteller, your throat chakra is probably very important to you as a person and in life. So healing through that is such a big thing. Like I'm a singer and I also like, you know, I have a podcast, I do YouTube. So throat chakra is a big thing for me as well. So yeah, that, I think that's, it's, it's a big deal. I don't think people have even tried it. Like the fact that you can just like express, make random noises, make random sounds, sing whatever you want freely because it, it is very cathartic. And also when you're talking about like kirtan, I think I did it once where like you're you're singing mantras together in a class and it does feel like church. Like I, I don't go to church because I'm, I was raised non-religious, but it's, I, I think there's something missing if you're not, if you don't go to church, like, you know, the gospel or whatever, like when people get together and they sing, there's something powerful about that, like activating your voice at the same time. Actually, you know, when people experience it is in concerts, like have you ever been to a concert where everyone knows the lyrics, everyone's singing together? It's so beautiful. And that's something I realized human beings need that experience. You know, we probably have been singing together for for thousands of years. And now in our modern life, we don't really have that opportunity to like get together and do those things. So, yeah. That is such a good point. And it's so spot on that it's such an ancestral primal thing to sing in groups. And actually there's research that shows that group singing is one of the best ways to boost oxytocin, which is the group bonding neurochemical. So it's like in our DNA to want to sing together. And I think that is the reason why concerts are so are just so activating for people and create so much joy and um and I and I do feel like that's something that has completely like shifted my perspective on spirituality in general because when I would go to that yoga studio and it would feel like this church like experience like I, we would leave that yoga studio on a natural high. Like you're literally feel high from just singing as a group. It's really wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need more spaces where we can experience that, like on a regular basis. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And yeah, for you, it must be like this must resonate because you are using your voice so much as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, totally. Um, okay. So you did talk about you experienced a dark week. <laughs> I don't want to let that go. Like, I want to know about it. <laughs> What's the experience like? What did you learn from it? Out of all the things I've tried, I will say up to this day, it has been one of the most powerful modalities because it is a therapy. It's called darkness therapy for a reason. And it's like so hard to put into words. I made a video about it that 
really only like scratch the surface of the depth of the experience. Um, I think what the darkness really represented for me and made me aware of is that everything truly is perception. Because when I went into the dark, I had a certain perception of it and I had fear around it and I had a lot of unknown and I had all this anxiety like about the experience and then like what I was going through in general. I went into the dark with all this stuff and as I sat there with nothing to do for days, just sitting in the dark with pitch black, you can't see anything, you can't see your hand in front of your face. As I just sat and accepted, slowly started fully surrendering to the experience, it's like the perception of the experience completely shifted. And what I experienced was a state of pure stillness and bliss that I had not experienced in very much at all in my life. Um, and it was like, whoa, I just, I didn't want to leave. I honestly, by the end, was so intoxicated. Like, I felt high. I, I felt, like, intoxicated by the bliss of that. And it was the same dark room. So then what happens? If I'm sitting in the same dark room... And I go in with all this anxiety and this perception about the world. And then I'm leaving completely different than what happens in our head is literally like we are creating our reality. So it it really taught me the power of my own minds. Yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna go back. I mean, I already am planning to go back next fall and do another one because I just I loved it so much. Um, it's not to say it wasn't challenging. It definitely is challenging for sure especially have if you have a brain that doesn't like to be quiet which most of us that's the case (laughs) okay that's crazy first of all I love the lesson is like the room was the same but your experience transformed as you went through that journey and so it is all about your mind and perception um I mean I'm curious logistically like how does that even work because the whole week how are you eating no like how are (laughs) like how does it work Do you have a bed in there? Do you have water? (laughs) Right. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, I was at a place called Sky Cave Retreats. Funny enough, it was called the Sky Cave. So there is that synchronicity. And it is a cave. It's underground. It's beautiful. It's in the mountains of Oregon. It's gorgeous. And it goes underground. And then there's a room, which is the dark room. And it has a bed, it has a bathroom, it has a bathtub, and it's it's very small. It has like a little yoga area, and then there's a little doorway. Well, it's not even a doorway; it's like a window that unlock, like it clasps, and then they put food through there, so you will get food once a day. Um, They bring, they come and bring you food. That once a day, so it's like one meal a day. Okay. Well, and you can't see anything. Like you you can't see anything. Like your eyes do not adjust. It's completely light proof and sound proof too. That's insane. Um, Yeah. So so you're just feeling around for everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're feeling around. I surprisingly like started learning the room pretty quick, and I felt like the navigation was easier than I thought it would be. Um, and I also wasn't doing a lot, you know. I'm just like sitting there, singing, sleeping, doing yoga, um, taking a bath. But yeah, they they give you one. Well, it's they bring you food once a day, but there's uh, enough for like three meals. They give you a bunch of different stuff, so you'll kind of just like plan when you want to eat. Um, the food was so good too. Are there t- cases where you're like, I have no idea what I'm eating, <laughs> or do do you generally know? I kind of figured it out because like I had, they like, I was there a night before where they had already given me like, I could figure it out. It was like soup, salad, like basic stuff, but it was really, really good. Um, But you are kind of guessing until you like taste it. But yeah, it was. Do you think it tastes good because you can't see anything? It's like your, your sense of taste was enhanced, maybe. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Um, 
Okay. And is it soundproof? Like you can't really hear what's going on outside? Yes, can it's you? soundproof. Oh, you, you okay. can't so it's just really hear. You. No. Yeah. For how many totally. days was it? So I did four, like across five days, but it was only, mm. it was like, uh, it was kind of weird because I did, it was a total of 100 hours, but I did 85 hours was straight through. And then I did like an integration day before and after. So I like went in the dark for a night, then came out in the light, then did this straight through 85 hours, came out, did an integration in the light, went back in and then flew out. And they they do that. So uh, they do it different for every person, I guess, depending on the experience and like the days you book. But they wanted me to make sure I'm not like coming out and getting on a plane. You know what I mean? The, like, you're slowly, it's because it's a therapy. You want to ease in and you want to ease out like any other cleanse or, or process. Yeah. Wow. That is, it sounds insane <laughs> to be alone with your mind and in the dark for that long. Um yeah. Did you get bored? Oh my God. Like at first, the first day I was trying to like do a routine. I was like, okay, I get up, make the bed, get dressed, do yoga. Then I'm going to like meditate. Then I'm going to try and journal that didn't, did not go well. Then I'm going to eat. And then eventually you're like, okay, well, I did all the things I said I would do today and now, now I have nothing to do. <laughs> yeah. So the... The routine goes out the window and I think you just end up being super intuitive with it. And then I slept more than I ever slept and I didn't realize how badly I needed to catch up on sleep. And that was really healing and important. Wow. Okay. That sounds amazing. <laughs> you got to sleep <laughs> well. There's another video that caught my eye that I think our audience would like to hear. There's like secrets of the healthiest old people in America. So maybe you can share some some healthy secrets or tips that you've learned from people. This is interesting because th this is something, this is a video I've been, I've been wanting to make for a long time, actually. And then I finally made it happen recently. And um, when I was doing my health co coaching program, and I don't really do health coaching, but it was something I did to learn more about wellness and like just for self-development. Um, I... And in that program, they did a whole section on the blue zones. And the blue zones are areas of the world where people live the longest and the healthiest. So they're living into their 90s, 100s, at least like 10 years more than the average person. And uh, in the blue zones, they're not getting the typical diseases that are killing most people. So they're not getting heart disease. Um or autoimmune conditions. They're just kind of like dying of old age, and very old, you know, and um, they have the highest percentage of centenarians, people who live over 100. And there are five blue zones throughout the world in Nicoya, Costa Rica, Sardinia, Italy, um, Greece, Icaria, Greece, Okinawa, Japan, and Loma Linda, California, which is the only one in North America. So I went to meet some of these centenarians pe and people in Loma Linda. And um, actually, even before we shot the video, I went there for like a whole weekend just to, to get to know their community. And the reason why is because their community is very tight knit. And um, I wanted to be respectful of them and like get to know them before I come in with cameras. And I was, you know, wanting to go just meet people so I went to their church service and like all, I spent a whole weekend there that wasn't filmed. And I actually learned more like then. I mean, I learned a lot when I shot the video, but um, the the Blue Zones have certain things in common and they have things that are very different. Um, for example, in Loma Linda, they are Seventh-day Adventists, which is a religion that really believes in healthy lifestyle practices. And they are ma mainly vegetarian. Um, most Seventh-day Adventists are vegetarian. And the dietitian, the 97-year-old dietitian <laughs> who I met with in the video uh, has been vegetarian for 76 years. And he doesn't drink alcohol. They they don't drink alcohol. They don't smoke. They don't drink caffeine. Um, and that's kind of unique to Loma Linda. Now, other blue zones are mainly plant-based, 
But for example, in Italy, they eat meat. They eat like local meat. They drink local wine, but they're really like eating the food that they're growing. And a big, like the biggest con- factor, I think, that's across the board for all the blue zones is their communities are super strong. They have really tight knit communities and they have very strong faith and like a low stress mentality about life. And uh, they believe that that's contributing to their longevity. So in Loma Linda, where I was, um, not only are they practicing a very healthy lifestyle and they're all really active into old age, eating really well, but their, their church is such an anchor for them and their faith is so strong. And the people that I met had such a faith in God and really like said that prayer was such a huge factor in their longevity and their connection to God and their community was like a big reason why they are living so long. Um, And we do see that in other research. Um, It's really interesting how much like we are, we are animals that need each other and a social connection is such a, such an important part of our health. Yeah. Like a tight community is so important. Love that. Thanks for sharing that. Um, okay, I want to end with what would be your advice to your younger self? <laughs> oh, oh my God. My advice would be, girl, stop stressing. Just chill. It's all going to be okay. Have fun. Be yourself. And just like let go. Just let go of the stress and just have a good time. Yeah. (laughs) I think we can all relate to that one. All right, Sky, where can we find you online? Yeah. So my YouTube channel is Sky Life. If you want to see these adventures we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And my Instagram is at Sky Cowens, as well as my TikTok. So come and say hi. Yeah, everyone definitely check out her YouTube channel, Sky Life. You are amazing. I love and respect what you do. Keep doing it and just being yourself. Well, thank you so much. It's so great to connect with you. This is awesome. Yeah, thank you.